Easton. I am the proud child of an Iranian immigrant. My mother came here in the late 70s to pursue education. She was the first daughter in her family to not be in an arranged marriage by the end of her teens. She came here wanting to pursue her uh, schooling. And after the revolution, she stayed. She never expected to marry a Khariji, a foreigner, but she did. <laughs> and so they had me and my brother, and we grew up in the American South. Tallahassee, Florida, there's not much Persian there. My mother is one of the strongest humans I know. How she managed to get two children wrangled, bicultural, bilingual in the American South is amazing. And how I work through times of injustice and hurt and oppression is poetry. And so I wrote something for my family and every family who is feeling this right now. When I was little, Maman, you would sit me on your lap and tell me a story about Parande, birds out the window and how they learn to fly. Red birds, blue birds, white birds, all in the greenery. Their mom on and all the other birds you'd say would urge them on little by little until one day they leapt. It was scary at first, but before the paranda knew it, it was soaring. I asked you, Mom, on the other day if it frightened you to come to this country, to leave behind everything you had ever known in pursuit of what you wanted to be. You said yes. It was scary at first, but not enough to keep you from leaping. This is the Iran I know. People so willing to chase their dreams. Visas and green cards, hard-won battles placed in waiting hands after years of patience, toil, and currency. Pistachios and too many shirini. Never being able to leave a mehmuni. This is the Iran I know. <laughs> But I am not so little anymore, and the stories I hear are not written by Mamon. They are written on screens, in sound bites, and 180 characters by vultures who are ruffled and ruthless and downright mean. In these stories, orange men in white houses use black pens to decree the people I love a threat suddenly. To keep families apart, students from studying to turn back dreams. To rewrite a definition of liberty from poor huddled masses to anything but immigrant, Muslim, or refugee. But there is one thing the orange man could not realize, one thing the big white house could not foresee. That was the other forest creatures coming together in such unity. <laughs> to hold each other up. Rebuild an entire forest out of twigs if need be. Refuse to listen to orange men in white houses and black pens and white men and say no. This forest is larger than you think. We have judges in Seattle. Rallies in San Francisco. and airport protests across the country. And we are shaking the trees, for this forest will not rest until you let every one of those parande fly free. And that day is closer than we think it has to be. 
Mama and June, Hanum June, and every human in my big, delicious global family, every single one of you here today, I hope you are proud, for this is your story. Thank you so much, Nassima.